Hi, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio again. I'm David Jansen, and uh, welcome to this presentation of painting with uh, six colors. What we're doing is we're joining together in, into the academies of decorative painting with some of the other uh, heritage teachers and designers and ambassadors, and we're going to be teaching you some of the benefits of painting with a limited palette and how to do a limited palette. What do we mean by limited palette? Well, it's simple. We're going to keep all our colors simple, all our brushes simple, all of our painting choices simple, and we're going to create some beautiful paintings with simple techniques and simple colors. This is uh, one particular painting that I just finished onto a DVD series. This painting is painted with six colors, and I have many others uh, that are also done, but I use the same simple uh, six color process. Now, we have some introduction uh, videos for you. Uh, in the Academies of Decorative Painting, in the classroom there on the Academies of Decorative Painting. And uh, you can take a look at some introduction to the six colors. And basically what I mean is we have six particular colors. We have one blue, one yellow. We have two reds here, a warm red and a cool red. And we have a white and a black. And this is what we do all of our painting with. It keeps colors very simple. It also keeps the cost of what we do very, very reasonable. You don't have to go out there and have, you know, 30 colors uh, you know, on a palette or something like that to go to paint something. You don't have to go out and buy all these colors. You can just use these six colors. And from there, you can make hundreds and hundreds of colors. And we're going to show you the hundreds of paintings we can make. Now, the six colors that I do, I usually am, am painting, like when I painted this particular one here, what I do is I take the six colors and I put them into the global palette by Global Art Supply like this. And I like the global palette because it's into a color wheel. You, when you have your colors out into a round color wheel, which we all learn in grade school, you don't need to know anything else. You don't really need to think. You know that the red and the yellow is going to give you an orange and that the blue and the yellow is going to give you a green. And if I want to make a purple color or violet color, I take this one and this one, and I'll get the, the violet colors that I have there. So it, it's all done for you. You can work around the wheel this way. Then as you go into the wheel, we're adding a, a base brown, which we make right here. This, all this information is in the instructions on how we, uh, how we mix these particular colors. But, uh, for example, this brown is two parts of this red to one part of this black, and you make this brown. Then this brown goes into all of these colors out here, and it brings it into the wheel here. If I wanted to make a, a yellow-green that's brighter, I just take this green and this yellow, and I can make a yellow-green that's brighter. If I want to make it more toned here, where it's a little bit less intense, not as bright, then I add a little bit of the brown. I use white to lighten colors, black to darken colors. Black goes into shadows, and the white goes into the lights and the highlights. But the highlights should be warm, and the shadows should be cool. And so we do that by two of our temperature controlling colors, which is red, violet, and our naphthol red light. And I'll get into all of this uh, as we start this uh, quick little painting here on a box. And, and I know it's a bit big. You know, I, I kind of debated. I know it's a bit big, but we're going to paint this pretty quickly and pretty and pretty fast. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the entire painting process. And just and you can just practice this on a board, or you can reduce the pattern down a little bit and and put it on a box. So this is the basic color. I take the six colors, which is our red, violet, naphthol red light, Hansa yellow, thetal blue, black, and white, and then I mix them according. And I have this all in the instructions for you. This is our expanded palette. We have the six basic palette and then it mixes up into these colors uh, right here and uh, it will uh, give you more versatility you know as far as the colors will I think there's like 17 or 18 colors there totally there but it actually is still even though we have 17 or 18 total on the mix it's only six colors okay and that's only six colors you have to buy and you'll learn uh, quite a bit from these six colors let's get going now I put that aside because that's my acrylic palette that one I have just mixed up as an acrylic this one over here I do most of my painting with this is the one I used on that uh, this painting of this one right here this particular palette now what's the difference is these colors here when I put them out as I have a little bit of extender medium mixed into them so they have a little bit of a slower drying time and I like to work uh, with those particular colors colors and uh, it makes uh, the painting um, for me I like to do it a little bit wet into wet and uh, I like that and so it, it just and all I do is mix up the colors and inside here 
just put in a few drops or a little bit of extender and mix it all up. It doesn't have to be what we call full global colors. They don't have to be, you know, uh, with the full global colors, you let them sit out for the day and, and evaporate out some of the water. You don't have to, uh, to do that. You can just go ahead and start painting this right away. And that's what we're going to do. So just mix in a little bit of extender and then you're going to need a little cap of extender also out here or a little cup of extender. You can see mine gets a little dirty because I'm always painting with a dirty brush. I like to paint with a dirty brush. So mine gets a little dirty and that's okay. I don't, I don't mind that. And so you'll need a little cap of that. Uh, as far as brushes here, I'm going to paint this whole entire painting here with two brushes. I'm going to use a three-quarter inch. This is the Global Arts watercolor brush. Three-quarter inch here for the background. And then uh, for the painting here, this is one of my favorites. It's done a lot of paintings for me. As a matter of fact, it's the one that painted this one as well. Here, I, this is a one-brush painting for this. I used the chisel of the brush to do any of the stems. And then I use this brush to draw flowers. It paints this whole thing, just this one brush. Brush. That's our whole thing. That's our whole basis of, of trying this and doing what we call the painted simply method. The painted simply method uses a limited line of colors and uses a limited line of brushes and they use very simple painting techniques. There's no side loading, floating. Or to, to me, floating color is difficult. I mean, I've done it for 25 years. I'm tired of floating color. But it's difficult to do. And, it, you know, when I used to teach it and all the students got, it was difficult to do, difficult for them to learn. And um, this is much easier. Everything we do is a full load of the brush. You're just going to be an artist and you're just going to paint. Just paint it. But we're going to keep everything simple. Paint it simply. So I'm working on this, uh, this box. This is a round box. And uh, this uh, particular box, and what, what I've done is, and it's been puttied here, and um, what we do usually when I have a box and stuff like this that comes into the studio, we putty it and sand it and we prime it. And this is just a prime color that goes on, a, and especially if we're not, we're not going to use it for a while. So I've had this box for a little while, and uh, if we're not going to use it for a while, we, we go ahead and prime it. And all I did was I mixed up a brown color. This is just yellow and red, a little black and white and just made up kind of a brown color. This is not going to be the color of this box when it's all done, uh, but I just mixed that up. And to this, I add an equal amount, an equal amount of the Heritage Multi-Surface Sealer. And that will give you a beautiful surface in which to paint on here. And then we sand it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. So I've got a beautiful primed box. And I'm going to do the background and the painting at the same time. Sometimes I just do the background and then I go into paint. And this one, I'm going to do the background and painting at the same time. Um, if you want, you can mix up a base coat color that's a little closer than what you want to use here. And then transfer your pattern. But uh, I'm going to do it all at once. And then I'll choose a different color here for the edge and stuff. And I'll cover up my putty marks and everything. And um, I'll use a different color for the edge and for the bottom there. We'll make a pretty box when it's all done. But I like to work, when I do a lot of these techniques, the background at the same time. Because I let the background vary and let it talk to me as I'm painting the painting. And a lot of techniques that was done. They they didn't use a solid background. They created the background as, as as they go. So that's just a technique that if you've never done that, we need to do a little bit of that. So any kind of color here would work. I'm going to work the background at the same at, at exactly the same time. Now what I've done is I've taken a chalk pencil here and I've just kind of sketched out, okay, I'm going to put a bigger flower here and I'm going to put a flower out here and I'm going to put a flower out this way. And one of the things is I'm going to put a big grounding, like a big open rose here, uh, maybe a, a different type of rose here and one right here. And the center, of course, would be right here. This one, I'm going to put the center here, which is going to cause it to, to point out this way and this one will point out this way. From here, I'll try to find its its three things of the, the bowl of the rose, find the three uh, parts of the flower and you'll see a lot of that in some of our other instructional videos about how to paint flowers, how to see flowers, turn flowers into different directions and see them, change them from circles to ovals and putting on accent leaves. What are some of the rules that you'd use there? Uh, we have a lot of, of educational videos on that so we want to we want to concentrate and focus more on, on teaching you some of the uh, six color process here than actually drawing the design. So you'll have a design. Just go ahead and put your design on with white uh, transfer paper, and then you'll be ready to go and all and put it on pretty heavy because all those lines are going to disappear. All right. The first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to take my, my brush here. We'll move this over to the side. We'll move this down here. You can see this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of the bottom of the box here. So you see just the lid here. That's all you need to see. Here, yeah, that's pretty good. And uh, thing we need, got my little palette here. And just need my paper towel. And we're off. Put my little extender up here too. There we go. Little extender into the brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have kind of a whitish uh, flower here. And I'm going to take some color. I'm going to make a neutral color. Now, one of the decisions that I have to make is if I'm going to make a neutral color is when you look at the palette that you have, you have all kinds of choices you can use. Now, when you're going to make a neutral of a white flower, you shouldn't just use black and white. That makes a gray that's just dead. It has no life to it. And so you don't want to use that. Artists of old will use any kind of complements. And if you have a lot of reds or greens into the into the painting, that's the color you would really learn look into uh, using red and green. So I have a green, a base green here. And this great base green is really only this yellow plus this blue over here. And that's what gives you this base green. So I have this base green here. And then I need to neutralize it. To neutralize it, I can go up here to a brown, and that will neutralize this into a, a warm kind of a gray color. That would do it. Or I can go across the wheel up here to any of this. Anything in this area will neutralize the green because it's across the wheel. If I wanted it cool, I would go right over here. And especially if I'm doing like the back side of the flower or something like that, I'd make this real cool gray. So you can see it's cooler as opposed to warm right here. Um, or any of these colors in here, all of this will work. And you're a flower painter, you want variation to everything. So I'm just going to add some of all of these greens together here and get some of this stuff. Just neutralize all of this to a nice neutral color here. And it's just a bit slightly green here, so I'll just grab a little bit more red. Grab a little bit more extender there. That looks pretty good. That's a nice neutral kind of greenish color here. And if I was, you know, definitely wanted it cool, I would uh, head more red violet. If I wanted it warm, I'd head more to the Naplaw red light. And I'm going to put some of this gray right around like this, right around into this area here, okay? And I might as well fill up that center here. Now, you'll put this on, and you notice it's a little thin. Part of the thing we want to teach you when we're painting like this is to teach you how to paint from thin paint to thick paint. In Ala Prima, and I'm going to do an Ala Prima technique here, in Ala Prima, you go from thin to thick. As the artist develops the painting, they get, they get thicker and thicker and thicker. So my first application of color is pretty thin. From there, I get thicker and thicker and thicker with my color. And the last colors that I'm usually putting on are really thick. They're very impasto. It's almost like working with toothpaste. That's why I like my colors into the global palette like this. Very tight. They're not loose. And they're very, very thick and very impasto. This is one reason why you cannot do this technique with bottled acrylics. It will not work. They are not thick enough. So don't even waste your time. I get emails every day from people who are painting our designs and techniques and trying it with bottled acrylics and, one of the, and they call us and they email us with problems that they're having and all almost 99.9% .9 of the time it's because they're using a less expensive brand of bottled acrylics and they are not that thick they're not made to paint like this they're made to just fill in lines and do simple base coat shadow and height nothing against them that's what their purpose is in the industry that's what they do however they're not designed for these kind of techniques these new acrylics don't don't group all acrylics into just that it's all an acrylic don't do that because you can't do that because you have acrylics that are 30 years old and new generation acrylics like this one that's less than three years old that use brand new technologies and yes they're an acrylic but yet they do so many more things so don't group these all into as as acrylic because you can't do that it's it, they sit at different types of acrylic that's just like saying okay these are all cookies where well, you have all different kinds of cookies you know i mean you can't make those kind of generalizations that this is an acrylic Okay, so don't do that. It's it's not fair to the new generation acrylics. So I'm going to put this flower out here like this. I'm going to take a little bit of my green, maybe a, a little bit of some of my various greens here, and 
I'm going to put some of this around my painting where I might have some other stuff where I know it's going to be a little bit more uh, formal in the design, some leaves that I have out here. So I'm a big believer of doing what we call paint in and paint out. Now, paint in and paint out, what that means is that you paint the flower into the background and the background into the flower. So I'm going to take some of my green and let's just say I put in some of this green, any of your greens in here, and I like to vary the green up a little bit, maybe a little more of a yellow green. I'm going to paint this. Right, and I know I'm going to have some leaves right in here. And I'm not painting in perfect leaves or anything. I'm just kind of sketching in. There's going to be a leaf in there. We know maybe have a little bit around here. You know, don't know exactly what's in there. Maybe one sits behind there. Okay, so I'm going to have something in there. And then, uh, you know, I might take and I want to have my background kind of a, a lighter green as well. So I might take a, here some of my my tans and my green colors that I have here and I just it, find a background color you like uh, maybe it's t if I want to tone something down I want this a little more yellow and if I want to tone it down more then I can add just a bit of the brown anytime a color appears bright to you just add a bit of the brown and that'll tone that down uh, you know tone it right on down for you so I want it just a bit yellow Get some light in there. That's kind of a pretty color. Maybe a bit of this green. And I don't have to have a, a real perfect color. It's almost my brown here. That's kind of perfect. So I'll put this color out here into some of this area. And so this will be my actual background that I'll be working with. And I'm just going to save that in the big puddle here. But I don't have to have the same color. I don't like to have the same color absolutely everywhere. Matter of fact, maybe we want to make it a little bit lighter up over here. Be an artist. Paint it. Have some fun. You know, paint it. They maybe want a little lighter. When if it gets lighter, it should get warmer. So I'm adding a little bit of my my warmer yellow to it. I'm just taking some of my white here and adding some of my warmer base yellow, which is a nice warm yellow. And let's just add a little bit of that right up in here and just slip slap that right down. Yeah, we went right through a flower there. We'll put it back in. And let's just slip slap that right on down here. And take that right into the back edge of this flower. There's going to be that flower there. Now, I don't want to get it. I want this movement back here in the background, but I don't want to get so much that it's distracting here. Then we'll let it kind of tone down here to a, another area here. So we'll just come in, and I love to use my thumb. I'm watching the movement into my background here. And maybe I want a little more light, like right in here. I mean, we could add fun things like a little bee or something like that in there, like I did in those um, uh, last video I did with a bird and the bees, and uh, it was great. I love that. Maybe I want this to come down a little more green right down here at the base of this. So I'll come down here and just shoot on a little bit of this green. And just right where these are going to come in together here, just take your hand and work those in. There's going to be a leaf in there. It's going to be a little color. Now, if you are, you know, if you have worried about your pattern or anything like that, you can always, um, you know, do this very, very lightly, or put your, or put this on and then, you know, restate or put back on some of your pattern again. But I like that. That works pretty nice. Just work that in. That gives you a nice, nice background here to work with, and we'll come up. And around this other side so you can work the background now or you can work it later and I started out thinking oh, I'll work it all just a little bit of time and now I just got into the background and just love that so that's all that's all good now I'll come in and, and some of you that have never painted before are probably really scared that you lost some of your pattern don't worry about that I'm going to show you here basically about the flowers here anyway so a flower, the main center flower here that we want, what we want is this, and I want this lost edge. And that's one thing that's very important about flowers is they've got to have what we call a lost edge. So we'll paint the back edge of this, and we'll just run our finger through. That's one reason why we paint the background and this at the same time. And we take a little bit of our green into the flower. That's where you get a little bit of crossing sometimes, and you get some color dragged in there. It's really kind of pretty. Now, so what we want is this lost edge, and we want to paint. We want to paint out and in. Flower goes out into the background. Background goes into the flower. Now, the flower here. This is the main dominant flower, so it's going to be a larger flower than any of the other flowers in the in the design here, and um, 
we're going to paint it kind of opened up here so uh, we want it quite large I'm going to have three others here that are going to be in circles and they're going to be more of a, a, a rose shape and you can just quickly put on the circle when you're doing a rose a rose is just a set of three circles and so you have the, the outside this will be the outside for the petals and everything then you have the inside here which is where you're going to have your your uh, inside bowl petals and the flower so if I want this one to pull down the flower here I would stroke this way and the flowers will pull out this way and this way and then the inside the middle circle here is the actual bowl of the rose this is the, the where the the uh, bowl petals will go these will be the reaching petals this will be the bowl petals here so you will have three circle lines here that will that'll go on and you can do a little bit of sketching up here like I had I'm going to have one here and one right out through here. These will all be uh, flowers that will come out and we were going to put maybe one or two or three small ones right out here. If I want the flower to turn, I do it more as an oval like this. If I want it to be flat on, I do it a circle. And that's the one thing that I think a lot of artists make a mistake um, when they're doing their first design. They do too many perfect circles and not enough ovals. Ovals rock and roll and turn the flowers in different shapes. So they're very, very nice to have in your painting. And you should have those because the variation of the rocking and rolling of the flowers adds interest to your painting. So you've got to remember to get some of that interest in there. Okay, so we'll grab that in and got that a bit light there. So I'll just take some of that out. Now that's just going to tell me a little bit about my, my flower and we'll have maybe a little soft little green here what's there we don't know it's just a little bit of some stuff going on you don't know if this is a very casual leaf here it's you know it's just a little bit of the back and lighten up and get casual here now we're going to put in some what we call modeling into the flower i'm going to paint this flower here i'm going to get some modeling into it i'm going to take some red this is some of my uh toned red here and uh, we'll just put a little bit of that into the flower just as the model it up maybe a little bit of my tone based yellow here I could use the Hansa yellow and the red too but uh, since I already have it pre-mixed there tone based yellow looks really good we need a into the center we need it cool so I'm going to grab some red violet here and I'm going to cool down the center of this flower this is where I'm going to build the very center of my rose and maybe out onto the edges here we'll put a little bit of that cool color one of the things that you got to do with your painting is and we've got to do more of it as decorative painters we've got to add more temperature warm and cool because temperatures do a lot for us this warm and cool does a lot for us so let's just uh, drop some of that down we can even add a tiny tiny bit of black in here to help us really uh, get this down deep because this flower is going to be more opened up so you have your three circles here with it more opened up but you still see we'll see the three circles here of this flower and so this will come around like this so I got a little bit of warm yellow there a little bit there I want a little more warm yellow maybe hitting right in here on the flower so that'll keep that nice warm going right down to that bowl and let's put a little more warm yellow right out here as well even though this will be white, that warm, this um, this particular yellow is very warm because it has some of that red in there. So this yellow by itself is, fly, is a little bit more neutral. But when I add a little bit of this red to it, it gets very warm. So it is a very, very warm yellow now. And it's actually warmer than that real bright one. Now what I'm going to do is just with that dirty brush in here, and here's my gray area here, and maybe take a little warm yellow into that as well. We'll come right down here with my whites, fully load on the brush, but I don't want to I don't want to load it really really well, but it's, so it's kind of modeled there just a little bit. You can see it kind of modeled up, and I'm going to come right along to the front edge here. Now a rose is just that set of circles. Here's your circle. Here's your center right here, and so along the front of it here, I've got to make that circle, but the circle, when you look at a petal, is actually kind of arched up slightly, so we'll arch that up like this, so here's actually going to be this, the, the opening of that flower here, and once I de decide, okay, here's going to be my, my opening here, what I usually do after I draw the opening is pull down, pull this color down right in this area, just slide your brush back and forth like this, pull this color down 
And what that does is that builds this front bowl of the rose here just with the color that's on your brush. Here, we'll just build this up and down. Just turn the brush over. So, you know, you don't reload the brush. Just turn the brush over. You got more there. And we'll oval that up just a bit. And then I'll restate anything like I need to have a little bit more of my shadow right here to help oval this flower up. So let's just restate that right there. Okay. And um, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to say warm this back here a bit. A little bit more. I'm just looking for this nice modeling of color here. That's the most important thing is I'm looking for this modeling of color. Now I'm just going to tap in and pick up some more of this light. Let's redefine our light up one more time here. Right into the very front of this flower. That's what's really going to pop it forward here. Here. And I kind of direct it and you can lift back up and push like this if you want to get that little kind of a fluffy little edge there or you can draw some color like this and push it up into place this brush is so wonderful this fusion brush because it's so soft and then I'll build this into some other softer petals here they have to kind of curve down here these petals here have to maintain its round circle see the round circle it maintains that's the most important thing there. Maintain that that round circle. Now inside the flower, I'm going to come in here and just open up a few petals here to the inside of this rose here. And I don't want to, you don't just want to go wee around like that. You want to use some various ones here at some angles that will get you some of this movement interest that we want inside this flower here. That's kind of nice. So this is a, a really an opened flower here. Quite opened up. So just like this. And this use, I like to use just the edge of that brush to put in like little light edges or little light touches. And watch that you don't get too light and pick up a little more white. Now you do have that medium white that's, you know, in there that you can build with. Now, as I'm building this, the one thing that I notice about this front is that it's really, I've lost some of my modeling of my color in there, and we want to get, we want to keep that. So I'm going to add a little more yellow, maybe even a bit of my uh, Hansa yellow over here. Okay, just, let me just lighten that, just a bit of that in here. And state just a bit more of that, like right into here. I'm looking, I'm constantly looking for that, and there's a little red there too. That modeling of color. That modeling of color is so important that keeps interest to your flower. So, you know, when you're a limited palette painter, you're going to just kind of work all these colors. Now, greens work in there great. Like I could take a yellow green, like this yellow green that's there. I could drop a little yellow green. Isn't that beautiful in there? Just a little bit of that here. And all these colors work together. You can do anything you want because they're all made from the same color. So you can work any kind of color you want. It's really, really quite fun to paint. So let's take some of that white back down here again. Let's uh, look for the edge and let's drop in our front petal here. Now I'm just going to wiggle here. Oh, it's picked up that white, I mean that yellow, really nice. Let's just wiggle and put on a little more here. Got this beautiful, this nice, pretty rose there coming. And let's just drop a little bit of light here. Here on the edges. Here. And I'm just pushing that up and wiggling it, pulling it back down real soft. My brush is just barely hitting the surface here. And just let that brush do the rest. Let this fusion brush do the rest of this. It'll do the rest. The fusion brushes are really soft brushes. It's almost like painting with a mop. This is what they're designed to do is to paint watercolor and to paint these types of techniques. They're very soft and they can paint these kind of techniques really, really well. So here I'm just going to push this around a few times in here to get a little more movement and interest inside the flower here. Just like that. And that works out pretty nice. Now let's just grab a little bit of this light color and we'll we'll pull out some of these petals here. And just wiggle this back and forth like this. See it just does the painting. That's beautiful. That works great. Find that light here. 
And the thing is about painting beautiful roses and stuff is try not to have the you know the whole petal here uh, like just one just one, you know flat like like a semicircle here. You want to have some bumps in it. I always say get some bumps in your flower. Get some interest out there. Get some bumps going here. Pull some of these things down and just lightly touch the edge and let it sketch into that wet paint there. And if you don't have wet paint in there, go sketch some more. Put some more wet paint in there. You know, but the, one of the things that um, uh, a lot of artists do is we play too much. We don't just paint it, we play too much. And I was a big problem with that as well. You know there, but we play too much, and when we play too much, it dries very quickly on us, and then we just give ourselves all kinds of problems as it's drying, and then the other thing, it all becomes one color, and what I'm doing here is, you see, I'm picking up more and more color, and my color's getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and I'm trying to build this light that's coming right out here at the end of this. This is where I'm going for with this final color here, like that. I want this white in here on the end of my flower. And I'm going to have a little white here, like on the base of this up. Over here onto the shadow side, I'm going to let this go a little cooler down over here. Not as much, and maybe even also a little different color. Put that out, and maybe a little. So I just, the head cooler, I just head towards my red violet here a bit. And that will cool this right on down to this side. So this will be a cooler shadow side of the flower. As I And I can take some of this warmth right across here after I put that cool on. Take some warmer color and just kind of work into that a little bit. And you'll see you'll get a nice variation. Now I should also have some of that cool color over here on this side. So a little of that red violet blackish kind of color right over there. And we'll just add a, get a little more red violet into that. Just add a petal or two looking over here like that. Yeah, that's good. Maybe a, a little deeper um, red violet, a little bit of black, or even a dark green. Kind of a deeper, cooler shadow right over here. There we go. And I can use my finger to give that the lost edge if I wanted to. Right in there. That look, that works pretty nice. Let's get that cool color and that lost edge back here. Let that edge. So many artists would say, oh, I can't quite see what's going on back there. You don't need to. It's the back of the flower. You don't need to. And we, we sometimes as decorative painters, we try to get so precise and perfect what we're doing there. And when we do that, it flattens it out. If I make that absolutely perfect, well, let me show you. If I come in here, and I take this light, this edge, and I come back here, and I put this perfect edge back here, what I've actually done is flattened out the rows. I've put in too much detail out there for that. So we'll just soften that out a bit here. And that is, you know, so we will have this nice, soft look here. There we go. Just... Little bits of that in there. I like that. It's kind of a pretty flower. And kind of a fast little flower there. Let's put just a bit more white right here. There we go. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, very different uh, flower. Now I want to have just maybe a bit more of that warm yellow bit more white, heavier, heavier paint. And let's build up this front one more time here. I want this petal a little bit more to the top side like that. And just a little more lighter stroke. So when you build that opaque color like that, you get that beautiful look to this flower and I'll, I'll let this kind of diminish here so just a little bit of light right there so now my eyes traveling around like that a little bit more to the light side right up here will help you get a light to dark sense inside the flower as well so 
put just a little bit more there and just a bit more right here and we'll cross just the edges get just a I use just a chisel edge there just to kind of give the impressions of some of these petals there like that there that's good that's nice and loose now let's come over here so this is kind of a yellow well actually let's lighten that up just a bit more right here i really want that flower to be quite a bit of pulling power right here on the very front of that flower so we want that right in there and onto this one as well now i'm a little bit happier with it there we go okay let's build up in here maybe we have more of a orange to red one here so we'll take a little bit of my toned orange color and let's set some of that in that's going to be a little too orange for me more of the toned red let's go back into that that'll be better i'm going to put some of that color in to this circle here and we'll smoosh this out a bit here so I get that nice lost edge here so there's my initial base of that flower coming in but notice it's very soft and I leave it very soft okay so then when I put details in the details pop forward okay and we'll take some cool color some red violet we'll come right into the center of this with that red violet that's our nice cool color here now if the light's coming up here in this, the cool will be deep up to the high side because this is the actual shadow because the light's going down into the flower and would actually warm up and lighten up a little bit down in here. So we'll let that happen. And But it'll be the reverse onto the bowl. It'll be darker down here, cooler. So it's cooler down here, so I'm using a lot of red-violet into the color here. Putting that cool right down here. There we go there warmer red and orange back up here warmer bit and a cooler bit a little bit right out there gonna then maybe I can have some of that yellow right up here where it's really going to be warm on the warm side right here okay let that this come right around there like that that's pretty good now I take some of my my um, right here my white right into there's my warmer orange and that yellow and I'll tap in some of that white but don't I mean I model it up again I got a nice rainbow kind of modeled up with the color here and I'll pull across here kind of determining where I want these petals again following that circle there's a circle there and then what's the next step build up the bowl just take this color and pull it down just take your brush and smush it down like this direct it around into that nice wet paint there and the one thing is if you're an acrylic painter acrylic painters tend not to use enough color they tend to get all these colors on here really uh, kind of transparent I have quite a bit of color on my you can see it, I have quite a bit of color on the surface of my of my board here so um, and I work right into that so get a lot of color down there so then we'll have that into that like that maybe a bit more yellow here onto this side go you know, make it more peachy really and let's get our whites back into that let's uh, redefine here pull down here very much like that that's good I'm going to take a little bit more of my red here and just start red and maybe a bit of yellow and white here and start uh, an idea here for the center petals inside this flower. Go. Maybe a few little cuts right there. And we're using again just a kind of the edge of, of the brush here. You know, just I use the chisel. I'll load up the brush. You know, I load it up. Okay, with the color. And then I use just the chisel of it to kind of draw around here. And the softness of it will do a little bit of the blending for you. I'll just move that around a bit in there. Like that. 
It looks pretty nice. Maybe a little touch or two. If you turn the color to the top, it makes it look like the petals up and facing you like this. If you turn the, the color down to the bottom, it looks like the petals rolling over and coming back this way. So you can control how the petal is going to look by where you put that color. And we'll work a little more here. A little more light here up into the front. Now I'm, I'm watching also right now, starting to watch its relationship to this other rose here. And I want to have some lighter petals here. Something like that. There we go. And just some simple ones here. This will drop down to the cool side here. So you see I picked up a little of that cool color there in the brush. And I'm just going to let that happen. I'm just going to take a little bit there and soften that down. And let's just draw an extra little petal or two right here. Just to kind of finish that one off there. And we'll come out here and sketch on some some reaching petals here. And you can push out and pull in. Remember, try not to make them just perfect ovals and stuff, though. Let's get some of that light color in here. There we go. Down like that. And Just an idea out here. Maybe just a idea there before that fades away on that side. I want to pull some of these though in a little bit more here like this. That'll yeah, it gives a better shape to that rose. Too much of an angle makes it uh, too harsh of a line. It it as the front of the rose, as you come to the petals to the front of the rose, they've actually got to uh, almost come straight in like that if you turning it so I had that a little bit too much an angle there on the front so I changed the angle slightly in other words pull almost almost directly in like that and then that angle that angle that angle that angle changing the angle as you're working this back and forth here there we go that's kind of pretty right there with that one and then we'll come right on down here. Now, real good one to have down here would be a yellow. Let's just take some of our, our yellow. And that's a little bright yellow. So if it's a little bright, I just tone it down with a little bit of my brown color. Let's put some of that into the center here first. And right down here like this. Again, I'm going to find its circle here. Find its circle. Find the area we want this rose to occupy, which is going to be right about in here like this. And we'll just kind of smush that color around. Lose the edge into that wet background. And if your background isn't wet, you can do this more transparent or just add a little bit more wet, uh, a little bit more um, background to it right in that area. We'll make it cooler inside here. There, and let it come out, finding that next circle. So here is your, that's going to pull down like that. So we'll find this next circle pulling down here. We'll find, we'll come up and circle around like this. That'll be the bowl here, the bottom of this bowl. Unless we were going to open it up a little bit more like we did the first one. But uh, on this, I want a little bit more closed. Cool color, maybe the cool color down here on this end. Down out here. Okay, so we get that nice, cool color, warm color coming up on that side. So more red violet down here, more yellows and that orange. You know, a little bit of that orange and stuff up here where it's warmer. More of your yellows, since we want this flower more yellow anyway. Up here. That's good. And we'll take some more yellow right across the front of this. And just wiggle this down and that builds up the bowl here like that there we go then I'll take a little bit of white with that yellow here this is the the tone base yellow 
and a little bit of white, maybe a bit of haunts of yellow just to help it, because white's a toner. White will, will drop its intensity, its brightness. So sometimes when I add a lot of white to a color, I will actually add some of the pure color back out. So with I'm using a lot of this color and I start adding white, it's going to start to tone down. So I'll just brighten it up with a little bit of that Hansa yellow and that will counteract what's going to happen with the white. White will lighten it, but it will also tone it down. So we'll work this. But more than anything else, you just get that cooler red violet into the shadow areas and you'll be, you'll develop beautiful shadows and then the warms, yellows, and, and oranges up into the lights, and you'll get a beautiful dimension to your flower here. Warmer colors, cooler colors. Very easy. And then we'll divide up a bit. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, they notice that I don't turn my flowers when I paint them. I don't like to turn the flowers because sometimes it takes it out of what, you know, I want the, the box to be viewed kind of like this, but and so I usually, generally, will not turn the uh, turn the piece, but y you can. But sometimes when you turn it, what happens is you generally uh, will paint the flower kind of out of perspective from where it's got to be. So be a little careful with that. Here, there we go. That's kind of a. We're going to put a, quite a bit more light right in here. Help this one come forward. And we go in that one and that one and that one. So I take some of that light color and I can just go back and rework. Add a few more petals where I want to. Go into the flower. There like that. That looks out kind of nice. More petals. And we'll cool that down right over here. We'll cool it down with a little bit of our red violet and stuff in here. And then we'll come into the center here with its kind of reddish but a little bit cooler. Whoa, that's a bit too dramatic out there. And again, work that center. Just tap the center around, the, tap the brush around a little bit there in the center. And We'll drop that around there like that. That's kind of pretty. Let's take a little bit of that color into here. That's pretty. And we'll just divide up like a little edge here. Here are these petals going in. And I just work the brush back and forth a bit. I like that. Just get a nice soft little but out here we'll do a bit more here and like that and these go in here just some angles to show this you know, you cut across like this and cut across and see the angle changes because it's got to as it's going around. And then I'll just pull in just a bit here. There we go. And just let some of that sit soft back up over here as well. Doesn't take much to say pedal. Let the viewer's eye say pedal. Don't be too specific with it. And your flowers will get lighter and airier. You let the viewer's eye paint some of it as well. And we'll put a little more light right in here. Watching those guys in here. I'm just going to wiggle a little light in there. And we'll go and we'll put just a stroke of that right there as well. Just like that. Now that's got a just a bit of cool color there. There. That's kind of pretty. That's just a bit light right there. So let's take a bit of that out. That's got your three main roses here. Yeah. While we're there, let's uh, work in that area. Let's take a little green. Any of your greens here. And a little black. To darken it down. Since it'll be a shadow, we'll also add a little red violet. So it goes cooler. And let's just add a little bit of that here into the center. That'll pop that out. 
right there's a shadow where this leaf was we're going to have one leaf right in here so a shadow there maybe there will be a little bit of a shadow one right in here so it's a real cool darker green here and then we'll warm this up a little more green a little more yellow green and I'm just going to wiggle this out like this into the shape of the, the leaf I want to kind of have like an oval shape and there we go sometimes if the paint doesn't move you can add a little extender to to move it a little better there we go like that and let's just wiggle that one here a couple of things though about leaves though you do want to have a variation of their shapes and, it's, and sizes. So many times we tend to paint a lot with the same size, so we've got to be careful with that. I'm going to take more yellow green. Let's just work a little bit of that more yellow green in there. And um, I can even have a little more yellow and some white in that as well. Yeah, get that a little lighter color. And just move that through. And I try to paint right up to and into just a little bit, but right up to that, uh, wiggle this in, right up to that uh, shadow color, but don't take it all out. Just paint it right up to it there, like that. A few, a few strokes at some angles coming out and coming in like this will give you some movement but you balance everything though up against your flowers don't give this so much movement up against its flowers now if you need to take the dark just take your finger and run the dark back out and run the light back in a couple of times until you get it because there's enough paint on there to run it in and run it out yeah so you just push the brush like this back and forth like that until you get that color that you like in there and maybe just a couple of lighter bits for the interest of it and that's all you need you know don't need uh, tons of stuff there I'm going to add a little more light right in here that's yes, right a little bit more there we go that looks kind of nice. So it just makes one a little bit lighter than its other one sitting over here. And like that. And let's just run a little bit of light in out here. Simple. Keep that one very simple out there. Nothing too much on it. You know. A lot of artists don't, they, you know, the a la prima artists don't really spend too much time on the leaves, and I'm kind of playing with them a little bit more than what I should, because the leaves are really uh, just accents to the main flower, so um, you really shouldn't uh, play with them too much. We tend to play with things a little too much. Put a little green out here, maybe that's a softer little one right there. A little shadow right in there. That's all that really needs. Let's get a nice green here. Has a little calyx there, or a little stem, I mean, out to these flowers. Have some coming out there. Have some coming out there like that. And we'll drop some out to a couple right out here like that moving these out I think would be nice maybe even putting another one back in let me see maybe put in another one right back up in here as well in fact let's just do that let's just take um let's take let's make it kind of a reddish one right back here we'll change that up just a bit we'll put this reddish one right in there that'll put a a little bit more than off than just having three and then going out too far so 
We'll change that up. Besides, I haven't drawn this pattern yet. I can change my mind, <laughs> and I do that. You know, and that's a, and I never thought I'd be able to do that. You know, to just sit down and just say this, but it really is. Um, it really is easier than you think if you just let yourself go. I mean, and listen to your gut. That's where the good artist is. Is right inside here. You'll just listen to that, and. Uh, you know, start in here, paint your center of interest flower, which was my white one, move out to the other ones, and let the painting start talking to you. What does it need? And with the all the prima technique, it's great because you paint what it needs. You don't just paint a flower, paint what it needs. And it's great. It's great fun. Now, that's going to be a bit bright, so I'm going to put a little green right with that and tone that down just a bit. But nice, cool color to sit back there. And then uh, we'll get a little bit more of our red. Let's take a little bit of our toned red, dark red, right into some red violet. And let's just put that right out here. And get some of this uh, variation of this color out here. And see, I'll push out sometimes and get a little different look to the edge of that petals of that flower. There, like that. So it's a little different. Now, that's going to be a little bit dark comparatively to some of the other flowers. Take a little orange, that'll start lightening and warming up part of it. Let's warm up this one side here and let this side go down cooler. So we'll warm this up just a bit here. And then we'll take some white into that to, uh, war or to lighten up that petal a bit. Let's move that light. I'm just looking for movement here. More than anything else, I'm looking for the movement of the flower here. And you can touch the edges of it here. And just put the, again, I use the chisel when I want to draw that edge, you know, like an edge of a flower here. Load this up, and you can use just a chisel to draw that edge. like that. Drop that down. That's going to be kind of a pretty flower in there. We'll grab a little more white, maybe a bit more. It's maybe a bit of the brighter orange too, so it doesn't get too toned. It gets too chalky toned when you start adding a lot of white. It gets chalky looking, so we don't want to have that quite chalky looking. Besides that, my daughter loves orange, so she'll like this painting. Some of my students right now are going, oh my goodness, he's grabbing orange. He never grabs orange. Let's soften that edge just a bit. Just right into that lost edge. We want to lose that edge back there just a bit. There we go. And a little bit more of our white light. Don't uh, play with it too much. Here. And I'm going to divide this up into just a few more petals. Like an inner ring of petals here. Just ever so softly. There, so you've got some variation. I'm going to Take a little bit of this softer right out here on the edge. There, that's kind of pretty. So you just get a nice uh, variation here. Variation of the petals and types and everything. This adds a lot of interest to the flower. That's kind of a pretty little flower. Let's uh, restate some of our cool color right back out in here into the center and out into the petals a little bit. Just wiggle it. Just wiggle your brush. Tap it and wiggle it. We'll deepen that just a bit more red violet. Nice cool color into the center. That'll cause the center to recede down. And then let's just take a little warm uh, toned base yellow. Tap that around there. And uh, let's grab just a bit of Hansi yellow and a bit of white. Tap those together, but don't mix them together a little well. And maybe add a bit of that base yellow there. Keep, just tap it together a little bit. And just 
tap that around in that center as well. There we go. Just like that, ma'am. I like that. And we'll put a couple of smaller little flowers out here. Maybe partially covered up there. And we'll put one right out here, maybe kind of a white one. Kind of maybe a back edge of one. That is a good idea. We'll turn one to the back. To turn one to the back side here, we'll put a little dark here. Like this. Bang, like that. That's just like and then we'll just take a little bit of our white and into some of the yellows and maybe a bit of that green, just a nice dirty gray white here. We'll do the this side of it like here. The flowers turning off here to the edge. And you can put um, backside petals, you know, petals that come out and stuff, but I think I'm going to put a nice little calyx on this one. There. So we'll just put this one on like this, just a Oh, two second flower there and then we'll put a nice little medium green and kind of little yellow green uh, kind of calyx on it here bring out and I'm going to set that uh, petal back up on top of that You get such a nice look sometimes by putting down that green and then just setting that petal up on top of it. There we go. Just set a few like little leaves and little stuff going on there. Like that. And let's set one right in here. Maybe this one's more opened. Here. We'll take a little bit of that orangey light color and open this one up like this. And again, you know, um, you know, using the the, the different play, ways to rock and roll the flowers here. Maybe we'll put this front edge right up on top of that edge or that one right there. Crossing the edges too is another way to add interest to your flowers so again you know here when you look at my little palette over here I have nice cool colors warm colors going into my yellows and uh, you know here's all my greens and my cooler green over here so I tend to put warm colors to one side cool colors to the other so when I look at my palette I know exactly where I'm going I don't I don't try to mix them up too much I kind of know them in areas that they are so and you know, anytime you two add that red violet, this is your first lesson. Anytime you add red violet to that color, you're cooling it down. So with this first thing what we're doing in painting is we're learning that everything we do here, when we want it warm, we add the yellows and the oranges. When we want it cool into the centers, we add the red violet. Cool side, warm side, cool side, warm side. Cool side back here, green with a little red violet there, and it cools it right down. Nice warm yellows. Red violet into the center, red violet down here, red violet here, red violet here. And you get this beautiful, um, you know, different colors coming out here. Let's uh, do some of these little flowers real quickly here. And we'll just put on some greens. We'll cool off a little bit here. Centers. Matter of fact, this one, let's turn it into a bud here drop the cool color. So I'm just using that green and the red violet. I like the green into the whites. So these will be like a little white flowers here. Warms, yellow greens, and yellows and whites. We'll warm it here. So maybe this this one pulls down like this and this just warms this and we'll jet on a little bit of a white Kind of flower there, just an impression of it. No 
don't paint it too much. Just give it a little bit here. Maybe a bit of an edge here. There's a little flower sitting there. And we'll um, give it a little green for the calyx. Like that, and um, then we'll uh, put this one up here. Let's get into our whites, and then let's take a look at this one. This one will maybe come back this way, and we'll put just a little bit of this pulling down. This will wiggle in and out this way so it's coming at you just a bit. There we go. Just like that. A little softer. We're going to have just a bit more light on this one. And change this uh, Yeah, that's prettier. And this one, that light will come right out here. Again, you can use just the chisel edge to draw anything, but you want that light right out here, and then let the and you know let the uh, softness fade as it goes out towards the back, and then we'll put a little more cool color or green right into that center. Even like a nice little um, red-violet center. Nice cool little red-violet. And it carries that red-violet out across there a bit more. And we can take a little yellow and white, even a little orange. Yeah, just a soft little center here. Soft little color. We should probably take some of that yellow and white and stuff right in here as well. There, like that. Just give a little bit of that. It's pretty. This bud, really simple. Just a little bit of white right into here. And we're just going to smash it down right along this light side here. Just run a little bit through that cool side. And that's just about it. Just a simple, maybe a little more light right at the base of that. Just like that. Let's take some of our greens. Yeah. Get more of my uh, medium green here. use that just to this is the toned medium green tone just kind of buried a little bit but maybe a bit of yellow green in it and you can have a little bit of blue just a you don't want to go blue blue because uh, we don't have that in here but just to give a cooler leaf color would be nice as well you know here just a bit of that into some of your leaves we cooled some of them just to touch. There we go. Whoops, too much into the a little too casual there, carried away right into the rows. We'll just uh, add a few of these around. Just little brush touches and movements of your brush just lightens up the design. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Just like that. Now we'll just working our way around back to a 
a little more, a few more little brush touches out here. And get some of that dark in there. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of that red violet and that green. That nice dark cool red violet green, maybe a tiny bit of blue or black into that. And the blue because you know you can get that kind of tealy color a little bit, but the black mostly the black is there to darken it. And uh, because the red violet's a real cool color. And that's really what I want to learn in this exercise is that your red violet is your cool color and you vary that red violet around to get this beautiful temperature to your flowers, okay? Now we'll uh, let me turn this back where it's supposed to go so I see it. And we'll just uh, take here a little bit more there here we're going to put some white flowers so I'll just put a, a, a few little calyxes there of that yeah. I love these little pointed leaves that you get you know that you can get coming out too here off of some of these yeah like that that's good let's get a little cool over here and just a mark there there we go just kind of tap that around that works pretty good. And a little more green over here, a few little. And we have that. So we'll have a couple of white flowers there. And um, another, another flower right over here as well. there now so just a couple more flowers and um, let's see let's do a yellow one right up here would be kind of nice take a little bit of our yellow and we'll just kind of smoosh that around with a little of that green picking up that's pretty good just smoosh on an area here for our yellow flower I love just to kind of push that oval in just let what happens with the brush in and out now we'll cool the center of it with our red violet of course a red violet will cool that center in like that that looks pretty good in there and then um, we'll take our redress our brush back in our yellow a little bit of light and we'll just put some light petals on there across the front hold towards that center just a bit just a touch or two back out here There we go. I'm not going to do too much to this one because it's way out of the, the interest here. And use just the chisel edge of that to draw that little petal line. I like that. There we go. And um, then we'll take a little yellow and green and white. Maybe a little green this time. And that's a bit light, so I'm just going to tap through that just a bit. There we go. That's a pretty kind of yellow flower. It just takes that up there. Now, it's it could have a little bit of that orange on it just to make it look more like that rose. So we'll just put a little bit of that in there. There, just a little touch of that in there. That's good. Then we'll do uh, two more little... Let's see, we could have a red or a white, I think it would be kind of pretty. So we'll just kind of smoosh on a little bit of our green. Maybe this one's more of a bud here as well. 
And this side would be the shadow side, so a little red violet into that. Maybe just a bit into that right there. And you push. Again, you kind of push the flower into shape. and Very, very soft. It picks up that red violet. It's so pretty. Cool color down there. Down like that. And just a bud over here. There like that, and just a little bit of yellow into the center. That's a bit much, so I'm going to take a little cool color and tap it out. Just a little like cool red, violet, and green. Mostly red, violet there. It just taps that right out. See how it takes that right out? Hmm. Bit of that yellow, just kind of warm that right into there. Kind of a nice... A little cool color there. Variations. Paintings there like that. It's kind of a pretty um, coloring there on the box. And uh, put that on top of there. When you paint, you know, and the thing is, you got to, when you paint this, you got to think of those three circles of the rose. You got to think the shadow side where that red violet goes in, and that red violet is very, very powerful as a nice, cool color. See how fast this goes. I mean, it's very powerful as a nice, as a beautiful, cool color. And um, then you uh, you uh, warm up the front part of it here. Okay, warm up the front part and uh, lighten up the front part here. And of course, the front part can have more streaks and everything to it. Um, and that's what makes it uh, absolutely wonderful when you get a few streaks in there. And, um, and then what you do is you uh, uh, come in and put in a few cooler darks in and around. Those cool colors really make a difference. Really, really make a difference at, you know, to the painting. They sink it back down and in. And so, you know, it's one thing that decorative painters don't have. We usually just, you know, make it dark. But that cool really does a lot here. That warm and cool that you see in the painting here. That really, that warm and cool do so much here into this painting. Uh, very, very enjoyable. And you see just a little bit of that light and little green. It's kind of interesting how that... Um, how the uh, background kind of changes when you get all these colors on and stuff. But you paint it real fast. We did it here in about uh, hour, fif hour 15 minutes. <laughs> Not too bad for a painting here to get that work, the background stuff on the same time. Now for the sides of it, this is kind of a narrow little box. So I'm just going to uh, probably put a darker band of green here on the top. And I, I like to come up when I do that dark band like that. And I don't want to waste all my global colors on this. So I'm going to use... Um, probably um, my acrylic colors over there but uh, I'll put a darker band probably like this and um, right up along the about the, the band edge of this like this but it also be a heavier band so this color will be that you know this band would be that color as well here and I like that but I'll carry it up onto the top up here so it kind of frames the top and um, and then I'll go back to kind of a lighter, lighter green, maybe modelized, it marbleized just a little bit, and it could be lighter than what the base is of this, even kind of into some of your yellows and stuff. It'll be pretty, but no painting or anything on the side. That's just too much. We'll let the decoration stay up here to the top. And uh, so that'll give you your first lesson here on a little bit of temperature. Red violet is cool. The reds and the yellows are warm. Red violet's into the center of the flowers, up onto one side of the flowers. The lighter, warmer colors, it really, really works. Cool colors, warm colors, give you a nice uh, variation to those colors. I hope you enjoyed it. We have a lot more coming throughout this fall of painting here. And we work with some of these colors and we learn how to paint with the six colors. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you and I look forward to painting with you here again at the Jansen Art Studio and the Academies of Decorative Painting. Thanks for joining me on this particular lesson. We'll do more. See you later. Bye-bye.